Everybody put on your vision goggles. <laughs> Nina, Nina asked for a vision OS to zap. It is Tuesday, February the 19th, and Baller, two's guys got to come up in the studio department. Yeah. Big come up in the studio department. So, on today's episode of Two's Talk, episode 11, from the new stewed, we are going Two's Talk, Skiff acquired by Notion, Vision OS, Zuckerberg versus Tim Cook, Evernote new pricing strategy and features, and the Super List release. Feature spotlight of episode 11 will be memories. We have a new segment alert. Can I get a new segment sound? Thank you. New segment, Two's Guys Explain Things. So in this segment, we will be explaining a thing that we wrote down. Top two's fast food. So fast food restaurants. I'm so down. Which I can't believe we haven't done it yet. Yeah, that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And then we'll have the wheel. And that's it. That's the episode. Industry news. Notion is on an acquisition rampage. Everybody in the PKM community be on a high alert because they're using their VC dollars to acquire your favorite tools. The twos guys first reported have not been approached. We haven't been offered, but we can't be bought. <laughs> what I know about Skiff is that it is intended to be a private first Gmail suite, private first messaging, private first storage, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. private first note taking. Right. So the fact that Notion acquired them, I found very interesting. I think the reading on the wall that I was getting, Notion is excited about having incorporated messaging into their super platform. They were getting a little scared by the super list. Buy up Skiff. Well, I think it's- I know something about Skiff. Say thanks. They're an open source platform. Fully open source. Fully open source. And I, that... saw, I saw a tweet that was like, you guys removed the open source to fix some stuff and then brought it back. Yes. Do you know what tinfoil hat means? Mm -mm. Conspiracy. Yeah. Does anything that you know about technology lead you to believe that something sketchy was going on with them pulling down their repository and then putting it back up? No. I think it was it was probably like a pure privacy, like security play. Okay. Like they were they were trying to fix something. They were trying to hide something. Not but not necessarily in a bad way. Like For the maybe sake of fixing some it. like vulnerability or something like that that they were trying to fix before they brought it back. And I think that we would be amiss if we didn't address, based on this subject, your perspective towards open source. Like, in the future, I either do or don't want tools to be open source. Why or why not? I would say do so that it's it's it develops quicker. People will build things that you've never even thought of. The downside to it is that there's just so many cooks in the kitchen that mm. there's no, like, direction or mm. whatever unless you're very protective about what you incorporate and what you don't incorporate. In an unrelated topic, but very, very hot on the streets right now, Vision OS. Everybody put on your vision goggles. <laughs> Nina, Nina asked for a Vision OS to zap. So it's called the Apple Vision Pro, and the operating system is called Vision OS. For 48 hours, it was the only thing that was online. People were like making new memes. People were reviewing it. People were talking about it. People were arguing about it. Is that just what happens when you become Apple's size? Yeah, when you become the biggest tech company in the world. Okay. All of the biggest tech reviewers want to review your tech. Are gonna talk about it. I mean, Casey, Marquez. But what about like the memes? Like one of the memes that I saw that I like literally keeled over dying was have you ever seen, have you watched Narcos? Yeah. And you know the meme that is like Pablo Escobar waiting, you know, like when he was inevitably about to get got, he was just waiting to get got. So he would like stand in his empty pool and he would sit on the swinging chair. Yeah. And the meme is like when you're waiting for something, <laughs> you post that meme. Yeah. Now he has a pair of like vision you know, <laughs> goggles on. Nice. Because it's like we won't wait anymore. We will like always be infiltrated with like you know, <laughs> stuff. That's funny. Yeah, I love that. But yeah, so like I mean, yeah, I guess you become Apple and you just own the world. They have an immediate connection with those people. There's no way that there's like 
it's like hard for Marquez to talk to somebody at Apple. No, no, they, no. They my like question is, buds. does Apple say, hey, we'll send you one for free and or we would love it if you would Probably. make a video? Probably. Okay, okay. So there's definitely some interworkings going on. I mean, we should be sending out twos. The thing that blows my mind, man, is that it seems to me that Vision OS is really just, it's intended to be what we want the Ray-Bans to be. I can see yeah, yeah, through this yeah. and you give me my screens big. You give me my messages big, my email big, my movies. Did you watch the Casey Neistat video? Mm-mm. There you go. I mean, I do know that he said that it's like a modern marvel. Like he was like, this is the best technology that's ever existed. You know what I will give credit to Apple for? Like with no shadow of a doubt. Because they have established themselves as a premium product, you can be wearing it in public and getting a lot of eyeballs on you and not care. Like, because it's like, dude, I'm wearing four thousand dollars. Remember what everybody thought of these? Yes, yes. These were these were you're an alien. <laughs> no, it was so <laughs> now weird. these are like, all right, you're kind of dope. <laughs> you're dope. You have money. Like I get it. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, are you thinking about getting one? Heck no. Heck no. Heck no. What well, would it would it ha would it do anything to get you to want one? Thinking about like something with books. Like, yeah. Something where like like it's it's basically like having a Kindle, but you don't gotta hold your Kindle. Right. Yeah, like, like a big like, book where you can just kind of like... Yeah, you're just doing... Yeah, that, I mean, that's exactly what it is. That'd be cool. Be that'd be cool. cool. You you wear it in bed and it's just like freaking... You don't gotta hold a book. Yeah, no, I love it. You can like twiddle your thumbs. Not that anybody asked, but I also will not be getting one. At the low, <laughs> low price of a small car, I will I will not be getting a Vision OS. Let's talk about Sora. Open AI video generation tool. Did you see it? I've seen a video but i haven't used it i have not used it either i don't think that we get the opportunity of using it particularly really i don't think so first reaction i mean it seems like it's what they they're gonna be doing right yeah like yeah. they we know what they're doing yeah they're beasts yeah it's amazing to <laughs> what's me. your reaction i was blown away i was absolutely blown away even with all the image stuff previously yeah because the image stuff is bad like okay you have to kind of fight the image stuff and even when you say exactly what you want or exactly what you don't want mm -hmm. it'll still totally mess it up i think the best suspicion or belief of it is that the joke is like entertainment in 2025 is going to be make another season of game of thrones where you introduce a character named twos joe and twos joe takes out the night king and everyone else so overarchingly <clears throat> ai tool not problem i don't necessarily know that i think that people will put a premium on human made like every artist right now is saying like screw ai mm -hmm. right like all the rappers all the artists all the whatevers i think that a lot of people will do that like a lot of people will just not necessarily value what's ai what's like it's like bloggers right now if one blogger is using AI for everything and one person is just speaking from the heart or like speaking from their own mind, I think everybody values the real over the fake. Evernote new pricing slash features. Basically, the majority of what you would need and then the upgraded one is more like a professional or like a business type. Did they tier. loosen their restraint on like how many notebooks and notes you can take in free? okay okay never mind i take that back uh oh free same thing they're, they're trying to push people into paid into paid so free is the 50 notes so that they, yeah they're definitely still trying to get your money which can't can't fault them which for is that. what happens when private equity buys your company can't fault them for that so any drastic <laughs> reaction to the evernote changes no i mean i watched francesca's video and it was just like he was saying basically across the board that it was a smart move by them because they're just putting everything in the paid tier. So you don't, you don't have to go above the personal tier. As it relates to twos, the one commitment that we can make with no shadow of a doubt is that we will never retroactively introduce a constriction to current users for the sake of making money. Mm -hmm. It's a disgusting abuse of power. Superlist is the final topic on our industry news segment. And it was relaunched by the gentleman who created Wonderlist, correct? Correct. What do you know about Superlist? I know it's a task manager. I know that they're pushing teams hard. 
like teams as their core right now. Which is interesting because Wonderlist was never really like that. <laughs> no, I think they were more personal. Yeah. Um, I know that they have a beautiful design and experience. I know that the users don't seem to be that pumped up about it. That's about all I know. When I was uh, I prefer that. traveling after school, I was supposed to go to the Wonderlist office and like meet some of the people there. I was meeting with like a bunch of CEOs when I was traveling. Yeah, because you were choosing. Yeah, because I was choosing hard. I can't remember what happened with Wonderlist though. Something happened like the day of that I I wasn't able to go. Hey, we're shutting down. <laughs> we just sold sold to Microsoft. Yeah. How do we differ? We're like a journal in a lot of ways. We're like write random thoughts down. And why what, what I found funny in the video was. The guy was, he had written down a task, but it was like a note. And he was, he said something like, and I've just got to change this thing into a task. Like he was using, he was using our jargon Term. while explaining the, their, their system. That's great. You just said something that I think is a little bit of a brain blast. Please. Twos really is a journal more than anything else. And as you journal, you will have things you need to do. I just like, I like seeing it from that light twos equal journal because the things that you run into throughout your day-to-day -day life tend to be what you would write down in a journal but this journal allows you to organize lists and to create to-dos and to set reminders it's a super journal so parker built a handy dandy feature called memories which automatically reminds you of things that you've written down in the past based on time. It's amazing. And it is my favorite feature in Tuse by far. Wow. Talk to us about how you came up with it. Talked about what version it first introduced itself in. I think version two, and it just had the years above it. I have to imagine that it was like a few years into Tuse. So tell the people in layman's terms what the memories feature is, what it does for them, how you benefit from it. The memories feature just resurfaces lists and days that you wrote things on based on time mainly year so seven years ago six years ago five years ago and then we have a month ago and a week ago but it's mainly year we don't do like six months three months or like one and a half years which we totally could but year based and it just shows you the lists and days that you wrote things down on so i'm gonna ask why is it easier to approach your memories in twos than it is to approach your memories on Snapchat. When I take pictures, my happiest of happy, this. happy, happy Joe, <laughs> look at me. I'm having so much fun with my friends. Was I actually that happy? Probably not. Yeah. Just probably going through it's the motions. So funny. I love it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so now when I have to look back at my memories three years ago, five years ago, seven years ago, it brings up some pretty negative thoughts. I think. Ah. I think to myself, you know, what was I doing? Why was I acting that way? Was I actually living in the moment? Because that I think is the biggest thing is that like, if I ever felt the need to take a picture of myself to send it to my friends for validation, then I was not truly being honest with myself. Like I was putting on a show, putting on a show, getting good lighting, just for the sake of getting other people to be like, wow. I'm jealous of that, mm -hmm. or I love that. So do you have any commentary related to the fact that it is easier to approach a two's memory and the things you write down? Because the private place, it's the private place that I know that all of what I'm reading right now was just for me, and it was my honest self because nobody else is reading it except for me. Certainly. That makes me very comfortable no matter what it says. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I had some stuff. I had some dark stuff from like, I don't know, four years ago, whatever. Sure. Today, on my memories. Hearing you say like, it's, I would almost say that that is actually harder than seeing whatever's in my Snapchat because that's like, oh wow, I, I remember when I was like feeling that or whatever. So it's not always easy. I love checking my memories in twos because it was always me. It was me, it was private, it's who I am, it's what I am. And it brings up some amazing things. Can you read, I'm gonna read a couple of my memories just to kind of, let the people peek into this feature and all of its power. Yeah. Two years ago today, Michael Lumpkin and Stu Kwiatkowski came to Tampa. No. Two years ago. No, stop. We went to Fox Hollow Golf Club. Stu left his debit card at the bar. So I set a reminder <laughs> for Stu to remember to get his debit card. Well, Stu. Justin was our waiter at Okanola, where we had the meatballs, the Brussels mm. sprouts, and the carne pizza. Yeah, their pizza slaps. Very good. Michael Lumpkin has been to Ruth's Chris three times 
and never gotten the steak. <laughs> that's insane. Oh, the steakhouse? At a steakhouse. Yeah, never gotten the steak. I don't even know how that's possible. I really don't. Three separate. What do you get there? I Lobster, seafood. Appetizers? Okay, I got it. Well, no, but like how crazy is that? <laughs> like, welcome to Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. What cut would you like? Oh, no. I'll do the. I mean, I could, I could see that. And, and he's not. I'm glad he's not eating like the mac and cheese and that's it. It's possible. But three separate oh, times, good. never gotten a steak. So, again, I could continue to read these memories from two years ago. But what is just so beautiful about this is that I was able to select those things. Mm. And I sent them to my buddies, yeah. Michael and Stu. Yeah. And I was like, guys. And the coolest part is that it never is baseless. This is this day. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. February 19th, two years ago, where you guys are right now, yeah. we were in Tampa two years ago today. Yeah. And we all had a laugh about the fact that. Michael still hasn't had the steak from Ruth's Chris. I immediately thought I can't wait to go back to Okanola to get some meatballs and a carne pizza. I went with my friend when we went to see Drake. Hot sauce. It's great. It's a great restaurant. He loved it. And Justin, our waiter, was a dog. So, memories, man. Shower thoughts. Four years ago. Love it. I have no idea how to debug. How do I step through a flow? Accepting all answers. Can I read you one more memory? And this is just the power of memories. I added view titles to stars and lists. We don't have those anymore. Cool. Gone. Compliments that make me feel good one year ago. Joe, you're a great dude. One of the most positive forces in the universe. Alan Clary. Love that. I mean, what a, a dog, baby. Dog. All right. Oh, and <clears throat> oof. Dad had surgery. Oof. Sam and I were preparing for our trip to Morocco. Grace, you wrote me a letter. I bought a pepper grinder on Amazon. <laughs> I wrote, I'm starving lol. And I know exactly what I was thinking. I definitely wasn't starving. So I thought it was very funny that I was writing down, I'm starving. Because, like, were you I'm fast not starving. Were you fasting? I don't think I was fasting. Uh, I just thought that was funny. That is funny. I'm starving. <laughs> I'm funny. starving. I'm not starving. I haven't but eaten in hours. <laughs> I'm not starving, but I am starving right now. All right. Top twos, fast food. Am I not guessing yours? Because I know what yours are. I don't think that you know. All right. Well, let's, yeah, let's, I'm not going to take your number one. I know what your number one is. You know my number one. I feel like I know your number one. You think you know my number one. Let's then go. I know your number two. I know one. I know, I know, two. I know you do. You probably know both of them. Rock, paper, scissor, shoot. Ah, new studio. In the first pick of the 2024 top two fast food, Parker Klein selects. Taco Bell. Yes. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. Dang. Oh, yeah. You didn't think I would get <laughs> no, that one? I thought you were going with someone else. Oh, wow. That's now I, now I'm really curious as to what your second one might be. All right. Snake. My first pick in the 2024 top twos <laughs> fast food draft is, no surprise here, the Golden Arches McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. That place yeah. blows my <laughs> socks off every single time. McDonald's, man. And I've said it on this podcast multiple times, and so I'm going to continue to say it just so I can get the people stirred up a little bit. Not only do I think it's my favorite fast food restaurant, I think it's my favorite restaurant. My number two's overall fast food. And there are still, like, a couple that come to my mind, especially if it doesn't have to be, a lot, like, available worldwide. Mm -hmm. But my number two's is Raising Cane's Chicken Tenders. Wow. Okay. Raising Cane's Chicken Tenders. Wouldn't have gotten that. All right. My number two's... Yeah. Jack in the box. Okay. Okay. I did not get that. I see I should have for Yeah, I thought I thought you, I thought you were gonna say that number one. Del Taco. See <laughs> I can't go to Mexico. That's that was my problem. Damn it, psychotic. That was my problem is that I was like <laughs> that those are the that's the competition, bro. You can only get one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so it's it, definitely not Del Taco. And it's definitely Taco oh Bell over at Del gosh. Taco. Two's Joe, let's kick it to you for the wheel. <clears throat> Thanks, Tuz Joe. I'm here in Tuz HQ where we have the wheel. And this week, we're gonna give away a Things tea. So on the wheel, we have all of the commenters from the last episode of the podcast, plus a few of the people that replied to one of our tweets. So if you would like to make it on the wheel for next week's episode, then comment on this video, interact with us on social media. Yeah, so let's go ahead and spin the wheel and see who wins a Things tea. T. Three, two, one. And this week's winner of a thing's T is Hubs32. Congratulations, Hubs. You are the winner of this week's wheel. Please comment on this podcast so that we can get in touch with you and give you your prize. Congratulations again. All right. And we're back. 
Congratulations. Congratulations to the winner of the wheel. Do you have any guesses? We can hear you from here. Yes. I think I won it. I'm going to go with Michael Potter. Hopefully, he <laughs> won the wheel. I've been I've been liking it, some of the things that he's been posting. Yeah, I really like I like I like Michael Potts. Congratulations to whoever you won. Apologies if it wasn't Michael Potter. It'd be really cool if it was. Yeah, that would be some. Or it would, would it be rigged? And now for our new segment alert, the twos guys explain things. I just got a bedtime reminder. Things is what is most unique about being able to write individual pieces of your life down without needing to worry about where it belongs. So these things that make up our system of over, for me, 70,000 things I believe I have is, is amazing. Like some things are worth more than others. Some things are more significant, but they're all just pieces of our lives that we wrote down as a part of like just our existence. And it's just super powerful to like be able to revisit those things and to talk about them and to add context to them and to share them. And so that's why the twos guys are going to explain their things. And we would love to hear your feedback on what you think about this segment. Twos guys explain things. Cool. Over to Baller to explain his thing. Okay. My thing was written on my meditation list four years ago today. And it says, stop your mind from wandering and focus on what you're doing. So this is basically like be present with what you're doing because your mind's going to be doing what's, what it's doing. If you are doing something you don't want to be doing, do something else. If you are thinking about something you would rather be doing, do that. So the background was I was meditating, obviously, and that was something that came to me while I was watching my mind wander. Mm. I was meditating, but my mind was somewhere else. My mind was thinking about whatever else I was thinking about. How many years would you say this was into your meditation practice? Mm. Three. Maybe okay. four. So you were actively watching your mind wander? Like I you do were... it. I do it, all, I do it today. You, do it today. S- you see your mind wandering. Well, that's the practice of meditation. Yeah. So I had that, that was a realization that I had as, as my mind was wandering. I was like, first, be present in what you're doing. And like you, you're able to eliminate whatever you're thinking about. Like me right now, I'm thinking about going home. But mm. I, can, I can stop doing that and I can be here. Or I can just get up and leave. I probably had just written it down after I came out of the meditation. Write it down on my day. Moved it to my meditation list as I usually do. But Mm. the reason why I brought that today was because I have been... That is something that I've been struggling with recently. Like this week, I've really been thinking about that. I've really been thinking about like, I'll be working on the new design stuff. and But I'm thinking about who I'm going to be emailing or what blog I'm going to be writing or the meeting that I have or like the, the user that I'm going to be talking to. And I just find myself, my mind just like racing between a bunch of different things rather than being focused on whatever I am doing. Maybe I'm like, I need to go for a walk or I need to eat something. And in those moments, we should either stop thinking about those things and just do what we're doing because we're going to be doing our best when we're purely focused on whatever it is that we are doing. If our mind's somewhere else, we're just not going to be executing as well. Or I should just do whatever the thing that I'm thinking about and I need think I need to be doing and just stop what I'm currently doing because I'm just not being as effective as I could be. So that was just something that I've, I've been thinking about. And then when I saw that today, I was like, I like that. Because that's something that I've been practicing. I've been trying to be like, no, from this time to this time, this is what's important for me to be doing. Mm. So I'm going to try to not think about anything else and I'm just going to do this. Be more aware of where your mind is when you're doing something. And if it's not on what you're doing, then bring it back to what you're doing. I like that. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Great thing. From three years ago today. Yeah. Friday, February the 19th, 2021. And the thing that sits right above it, I find very funny. The thing right above the thing that I'm about to bring is payday. February the 19th. Because I was just on a bi-weekly pay schedule. Yeah. And the reason I find that so funny is because, you know, when you gave me twos for the first time... I, I think like many other people, had a little bit of confusion as like where it fits into my life. Like what do I write down? What is significant for me to remember? Mm-hmm. And one of those things was when am I getting paid? <laughs> you know, like when when is my company paying me? Yeah, yeah. And that's very like productivity <laughs> based. That's very like workplace based. The other thing that I wrote down on Friday, February 19th, 2021. Ali said yes to being my girlfriend. Wow. Let's go. Heart emoji. Unreal. A text heart emoji. That's big. That's a big one. That's a big one. The reason 
I'm sharing this thing. I fell in love with twos around my relationship with mm. Allie, 100 percent because the things that I would write down about her that then made me a better boyfriend and made me and made her love me more because I was able to access them and process them and remember them was at its foundation what turned twos from a payday mm -hmm. app mm -hmm. to me mm -hmm. to a my life is dedicated to this platform. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. It was through my experience writing things down about Allie yeah. that made me fall madly in love yeah. with twos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That thing, Allie said yes to being my girlfriend. You cannot take a picture of that. Right. You cannot remember these days, these insignificant days, because you would never put it in a calendar. You maybe would call it an anniversary, but it's like both an anniversary and it's not an anniversary. No, it's usually weddings. You know what I mean? <laughs> and and First date. And it, right, first, but it's also not your first date. There's so many firsts. I feel, I feel what I felt when I wrote that down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because even something as simple as typing the less than sign and oh, the number like, three like to create the little heart. Yeah. It it says so much about that moment for me. Right. Where it was just like an overjoyment of like I did it. I did it. Yeah. Wow, what a life. But it goes further than that, like. Again, I find it amazing how I transformed this day, February 19th, 2021, from payday into one of the most significant days <laughs> in my twos. Yeah. And the reason I wanted to bring this thing to the table is because it only snowballed from here on. It literally became mm. now writing things down that she wanted me to remember about her. It led me to writing things down that we were arguing about. It led me to write things down that she complimented me on. It led me to write things down about our reservations, about our, you know, love languages. Just there was something so unique and fulfilling about writing things down about that relationship that made me fall madly in love with writing those things types down. of things down. <laughs> yeah. I just I love rereading that because it it tells a story. It's it's one thing, it is eight words and forty characters, but it literally reminds me of so much more than that. And I, I loved being able to revisit it. I love being able to see that thing in my history. So we need people to give us feedback on the new segment. Ding, 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 ding. Because I think it's the best segment of all time. I really enjoyed that think, segment. I, and I think we should have Collins with Choosers. Maybe you can come on, come on the pod with us and share their own things and the stories behind their things. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and most importantly, hopefully we can inspire you through the things that we explain to try and write new things down. Don't just use twos as a task manager. Don't just use twos as a journal. Use twos for all of those significant or insignificant moments in your life. See how they feel. See how they fit. Make you feel. See how they make you feel. <laughs> and then either keep doing it. Or do something else. What do you want to do? So... We would love to invite some more Tuesers on to explain their things. We would love to hear your feedback on the things that we shared. If you've got a thing, let us know in the comments that you want to be, that you want to tell people about your thing. That you want to join the pod to tell people about also, things. let us know your top twos, fast food restaurants. We would love to hear them all over the world. And until next time, twos out. Twos out. I love you.